um, ice camping, snow camping, or in the rocky terrain. Um, last time we went on a rocky terrain, you guys know um, Pyro cut his pad and actually split one of his pads. Um, it was really bad terrain. So in those cases, we want to think about boots. If we were doing hot weather, think about cooling jackets. Um, and sometimes safety harnesses. When we go out swimming, you guys know. <laughs> yes, Roxy's having fun today. <laughs> um, that having those certain packs with handles on them can be really nice to help your dogs when they get stuck. Um, a good example of that, I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, my old man, Jake, he was out playing in the, in the river tonight, and he actually got kind of ledged, wedged in one of his legs in between some rocks. Um, by the time we got there, he got himself out, but what happened if he really got stuck? Having that type of harness can really help pick that dog up out of those emergency situations. So all those, just the dogs out playing, they can hurt themselves. All right, packing for ourselves. Um, we do need to carry in as much as we can, guys. The badge requirements doesn't mean we have to carry in all our tents and our cookware and the whole nine yards. Some of that can be brought in for us. But you need to learn how you're going to pack, okay? What type of pack are you going to use, an internal frame or an external frame? Um, a lot of people like to use the internal frames because they're a little bit easier. Um, there's less chance of getting hung up on twigs and stuff like that because it's built in. They tend to cost more. So you need to consider what you want. Um, the kind of terrain we're going on is going to be an uneven terrain. So you're going to want your weight a little bit on the lower side in the middle of your back because it gives you better stability. All right, so when you're walking over, over some hills or over some fallen logs, stuff like that. So when you pack, think about packing your stuff now. Keep most of your heavy stuff lower. Don't pack your heavy stuff to the top. And also can remember keeping items that you may need to use quickly. All right, maybe you need to use that toilet paper really quick. Right? Don't pack it in the, bit, in the bottom, stuffed in a bunch of Ziploc bags because you want to keep it dry, but you can't get to it. <laughs> yes? Um, can you bring, like, wet ones? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, it, something like that is probably not really that degradable. You will be, need to take that out with okay. you. Okay. Okay? So you need to consider that type of information with you. Um, so what would you, you think? Plastic Ziploc bags? Plastic Ziploc okay. bags, something that you don't mind storing into, and you'll be okay. Um, but again, we want to do, leave no trace. That's one of our main goals. All right, not getting lost. Um, again, we should not have a problem, guys. We've been on this trail. The owner's going to be with us to the property. She knows the property pretty good. But what happens if you're going to a different place? All right, stay on the trails. I mean, if they're well marked trails, don't start saying, hey, I'm going to go play out somewhere else. We may not find where we're going. All right, in unfamiliar territory, carry a map and a compass. <laughs> One of our dogs is being really cute, Mark. I know you can't see it, but it's really cute. <laughs> see, she loves us. Yes. She wants to go back home with us. <laughs> see, so if the camera's shaking a little bit, it's because I'm laughing. She's so cute. All right, if you're on a trailhead, a <coughs> bunch of us went on a trail that none of us knew that long ago. Actually, that was the trail that Pyro cut his um, pads out. Um, we didn't know where we were going, and they had different trails, different colors, and we're going, hey, where do we go? Well, guess what? And I didn't think about it. They had a nice map right at the beginning, all painted out the whole nine yards. I, every one of us had phones, and had, every one of them had cameras. We could have taken a picture of that map, and then we could have had a better idea of where we were going. You want treats or something? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so think about that. Carrying a GPS device. Many of our smartphones have them now. They have dedicated GPS devices you can take. Um, think not about that. Oh. Yeah, up here, the GPSs may not work really good. So guess what? That's another reason why. I know Beth and I had this discussion a couple weeks ago. Why having the actual compass and actual maps sometimes is a necessity. Not just because the batteries may die, but because some devices don't work in certain areas. Some of the major GPSs, I would assume, work because they're satellites. But our phones need that 3G, they need to connect to the internet. But a lot of the, the dedicated GPS types that work off the satellites, they basically work everywhere, um, they, but they can still lose that satellite reception sometimes on weather, too many tree canopies, stuff like that. So they're not a guaranteed source, okay? Also be aware of the borders, the roads, the power lines. And what I mean by that is watch where we're going. When we were out on that trail tonight, we had a river to follow. Guess what, if we're going upstream, um, and we say, uh-oh, I'm lost, start walking back downstream, you're probably going to get close. All right? We also saw that crossing that river, there was a road. So keep that in mind when we're going out. 
We also have a compass. Yep, and knowing, starting out with a reading with your compass to start with. Okay? So know your landmarks, your direction of travel to those <laughs> landmarks. Okay? And one really good trick is look backwards. When you're walking forwards, all right, actually turn around because it's going to look different. All right? That one tree that you're going this way is blocking a view. You turn around, you can see something totally different. So walk, look backwards sometimes as you're walking. And moss grows on what side of the tree? So North side. North side. Uh oh, now you asked us a question. I'm gonna get in trouble with Martin with. Um, well, <laughs> well, double check. I'm not having. I, it's, it's I north think south. that's a. I yeah. think it, it can grow any. It's, yeah, it's, it's where it doesn't get the sun. Get the, get the sun, which is yeah. the north side. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, if you are lost, one of the biggest things you want to do is stop. All right. Don't keep going. If you don't know where you are, stop. Try to get your bearings. Okay. Trust your gut. All right. If you feel lost, don't panic. A good th rule of thumb that I teach when I'm teaching emergency pet first aid and stuff like that, stop, take a breath, all right, count to 10, relax and figure out where you are. Don't just start running around because then you get yourself even more lost, okay? Think, can you get back to your last known location? All right, if you're kind of lost, but you think, oh, I know if I go right here, I'll get to this spot and then I can see something and I know where I'm going, all right, then you want to kind of walk backwards. Observe. Can you see some landmarks that if you're carrying a map, you can open that map and you can say, oh, I know, it's right there, and I can see it. All right? That can help you. All right, plan. Talk out your plan if you're with other people. Does it make sense to everybody what you're talking about? And if you're by yourself, all right, talk to yourself. Does this sound like this is actually going to help me get back to where I need to go? All right? There's all types of signaling devices, guys. We have our phone. If we got service, we can call. <coughs> All right. There's the GPS devices. There's mirrors that everybody has now. In the, they picked up some of the kits. Um, you, if you've got helicopters going overhead and you start flashing this thing, trust me, they can see it from a long distance away. It's, it's like tens of miles, depending on the conditions and the sunlight and the views and stuff like that. But they can see that flash from a long ways away. Okay. Writing on the ground. If you've got a big clear area, um, you can write, take some white birch trees that you found and write something out. Take our red t-shirts, write something out. That's going to stick out. If you're in the snow and you've got a bunch of red t-shirts, it's going to show. You got a question, Mary Frances? I did. On the helicopter, um, it, when you, if you signal and you see a helicopter, do most people, even if it's not like a, you know, like, if it's just a, a helicopter going by, would they know that there's trouble? They may not. They may just say, hey, something's flashing, flashing down there. Okay. I mean, there are a lot of silver things out there that'll flash. But if you've got if you're lost and they're looking for you and then they see this, all right, they're gonna they're gonna investigate. If there's just a guy going by and they see a flash, they may not. But if it's a trained person, there's a lot of military helicopters that fly in this area, and um, they may say, Hey, is that somebody signaling for help? So they may actually come down. Alright? Um, and you can, you can burn a fire, all right? Making a very smoky fire. Burning, trying to get that wet material to burn. Wet grass, wet leaves. Again, if you're doing something like that, you need to be really cautious. All right, it's not going to help you if you start a signal fire. Now you've got to run from the fire. All right, so you can, that is a dangerous way of doing it, all right? Whistles can work really good. They can carry a long ways, all right? And when you're doing that, try to learn the international signals, all right? Blowing a whistle once. I don't have these memorized, but if I'm, I'm over here. All right, if I'm not mistaken, then I'll get, I'll get this for you guys. I may be around to turning this off memory. Two whistles, um, I need help. All right, and there is one for three, and I just I can't remember that one at all off the top of my head. I should have that one in my slides. All right, so we already talked really quick about choosing a campsite, guys, but one of the biggest things we talked about when we were out there is practicing for low-impact camping, all right? Put your tent on a durable surface. I mean, believe it or not, put it on rocks, okay, bare ground, sand or gravel, so that we're not damaging the wildlife out there, all right? Um, camping um, at, at established campsites. I mean, if there's actually campsites that are made and set up, use those. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, watch for overhead. We talked about that. We're in definitely pine country. There could be a lot of dead branches up there. All right, so make sure there's nothing that looks like, especially that's big, that looks like it's going to come down in a windstorm. You really don't want that happening in the middle of the night. 
Uh, wind direction, placing your tent, we talked about that. Wildlife, you definitely don't want to be setting up near wildlife. Trails, guess what, watch for any kind of ground nest. Bees, <laughs> you don't want to be setting those up, especially if it's getting cold at night. You set it up and during the day it warms up. Guess what, where are they going to do? They're going to become active. So you need to be careful of where you're setting up your tent. Watch for those insects we just kind of talked about. The terrain, trying to set up on the high side. All right, so if it rains, water goes away from your tent. Really, really important. Trust me, many, many people have gotten wet and gotten flooded out. <laughs> it's not so bad if you've got your inflatable mattress because you'll float with the tent. But you really don't want to be getting all your stuff wet. Okay? Think about what happens if you've got to go to the bathroom. All right? You want to be someplace where hopefully there's some privacy that we can kind of say, okay, I can go to the bathroom over in this corner. All right, you really don't want to be in this wide open area and, uh, hey, can everybody turn around for a minute? <laughs> so you want to think about stuff like that. Well, I'm not going to go through the fire. We've already done that outside. But, um, again, bring the dead ignition source. They say bring matches, but I would tell you, have that emergency tinder. Have that magnesium. Even though that magnesium works really well, it can be time consuming. you really got to be able to get enough flint. You saw that's the only fire that I failed on out there tonight. And you saw how easily the other two worked. But having that extra tinder can make a big difference. And making sure you're protecting. I'm going to go through just a couple. I'm pretty sure I have other slides with the different types of fires yet. Right, a TP fire is what I started out there. They're one of the easiest and fastest ones to get started because the flame is going up. You generally have enough airflow coming in. The flame is going up. You can build a pretty easy fire. It's really good for a nice quick warmth. Okay? Uh, and it's good to boil water over because that flame is going straight up. So as long as you're not making it too big, all right, but you can really boil water pretty quick with that. That pyramid platform fire, that's really nice. Say you were doing a winter camping, you're going to get a lot of coals with that, and so you're going to get a lot of warmth. And you don't need quite as much fire going once you get started. It's going to keep those fire going for a long period of time. And if you're worried about coyotes and bears and other things, you may have to have somebody who does a fire watch to keep that fire going, but it's a long-lasting fire. TP fires generally go out pretty fast. When you say a lot of wood. producing a lot of coal, what does that mean? The, 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 the embers from burning, everything's burning, especially once you start burning logs, little pieces fall off, and those are the embers. Okay. This is like my crazy little redhead. <laughs> That's what she, her, she, her name is perfect, ember. All right, that parallel fire, these can be really nice for cooking on. And basically what you're doing is you're putting two logs really close together, and you're building the fire in the middle. That fire keeps going there and you can put a pot on it and it's a nice way of cooking. That reflective fire, if we really wanted that, because it's really cold out um, and we wanted the fire to head towards the tents to kind of warm those tents. Um, rocks can work, you need to be careful with the rock ledge because they can overheat and actually burst. All right, and actually have flying debris. Um, logs can work. Um, anything that will reflect the heat towards the way you want to go. If you're using logs like this picture shows, don't get it too close because the logs will end up in fire. You got a question? What do you mean by burst, like on the stone wall? Yeah, what happens if there's cracks and stuff with the stone, yeah. and then there's moisture in there, oh. and then you got water in between, and then it starts to heat up, it'll actually crack the rock, and it can actually, that gas, just push that rock right into your, your eyes, your face, into your tent. So kind of like popcorn, basically. Kind of like, yeah, popcorn. <laughs> it's a good example. Okay. So you have to be careful with the surfaces that you're using. All right? Um, natural tinder, we've talked a little bit about this is a bigger version of that fire stick that we're talking about where you're actually kind of shaving it and that you're going to use that if it's, especially if it's really wet wood, that works really good. You can bring some of that um, man-made type tinders with you, the tender quick, wet fire, newspaper, shim wood which is really cheap, lightweight, that works really good. And if you know you're going into wet conditions or you think you are, bring that stuff, it makes your life a lot easier. All right. Keeping critters away. This is going to be really important for us. Hopefully the insects won't be too bad out there, but make sure we keep our site clean. All right? We're going to want to make sure we have a trash bag, making sure everything's getting put up, closing the trash bag, not only for the critters. Uh, we had our little um, our get-together tonight. Uh, what happened to that trash bag out there, guys? <laughs> I think every dog investigated it. So we're going to want to make sure that either